only need to see on the IR something that adds for, for a guy which is a constant, to a guy that is a register and is setting on other racers at an output that will be uh, transformed to a uh, add IU node during the instruction selection. But if you're um, if, if this the thing you want to match is complicated enough that you can't represent using this language, using the table gen language, you can also uh, write C custom code to handle it. So to this point, question? Yeah, so what So um, after that, we can also register more target in the more target dependent optimizations. So for example, here for the the Spark architecture, uh, we can have like a floating point mover mover pass to handle uh, floating point stuff in a better way. And we also have a custom delay slot filler to get it efficient delay slots during the emitted code. So after everything, for example, let's say for the Spark target. After we, we do the legalization, after we do the deck combine, after we do the instruction selection, we can also go there and put more custom passes to handle the, the instructions. We can do that uh, pre uh, register location, or you can do that like post register location. You can decide where you want to to plug your your custom optimization pass, and it, they can also be target specific, like I'm showing you. So. Um, just to, to show for, for the ARM target, for example, LGAM supports like from V40 to V7M architectures. Uh, we support all the, the recent uh, Cortex processors, all of them and a lot of processors before. And we feature everything that uh, ARM has. It's great now, like Neon, FVP2, FVP3, Thumb2. We can have like separate only Thumb2 generated code. We can uh, we have a pass that uh, can transform some to code when 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 needed to 16-bit code to have the smaller code. I'm showing you later about that. So we support everything that good ARM compilers support, and we also run for ARM several different optimizations. We have a, a load star optimization pass which will handle better the loading stores that can transform simple loading store, recognize a sequence of simple loading store to load in store multiple, for example. We have a size reduction pass for thumb to code. Um, also, we have a constant island pass, which mix code between the ARM uh, data stuff between the ARM instructions, so it can get easier for PC relative access. Uh, we also have like the thumb to IT block press to recognize IT blocks for 16-bit instructions. So for example, as I was telling you, the constant island pass uh, address the, the limited PC relative displacements on the ARM architecture. So the constant are, are scattered among the code to, to get like easily accessed from them in a function. Uh, we also have the load star optimizer. So you can create um, load star multiple instructions when we recognize sequence of instructions that can be translated so we can yield smaller code. We also recognize um, LLVM meets by default uh, regular uh, SDR and LDR instructions for when we want to store a load 64 bit stuff. We use uh, 232, 232 uh, memory access instructions, and then later we combine those into LDRD and SDRD. So during code gen, during the instruction selection, we don't match those kind of instructions directly but we have a pass that later to recognize them. Uh, we also have code size reduction pass for the thumb2, where we can reduce whenever possible thumb2 instructions to their 16-bit counterparts. We also have the IT block pass, as I told you before, to recognize the instructions suitable for an IT block. And I'll just Talking about a little bit about MIPS. MIPS is it's not that a uh, it's not a rich brother from ARM because um, there's not a lot of people working on it, but it's actually support the O32 ABI and the ABI, and support like simple MIPS one targets, which no one uses right now. But it supports uh, 4K targets and the Allegrex core for the PSP, 
and um, Vips doesn't have a lot of targets. It actually doesn't have any specific paths to which is like clever enough to do great SNP stuff, but we have deck combines and other kind of improvements that are, it, so it's not like, it's not a well-developed, uh, it not has like the contributions that ARM has, but I welcome everyone to contribute if you like it, to get it better, but it can compile like lots of code normally. So that's it, I think I spoke really quick. Questions? Um, from a from a compiler perspective, I think LLVM is you know it's, it's really interesting and it's very clear why people would be interested. But you know, I'd, I'd like to know where you see it going and why embedded Linux developers, for example, might care, and you know how how LLVM and Clang can fit into you know building the kernel. I know there was a kind of a, a first ever Clang kernel build a couple of months ago and. You know, so why should embedded Linux developers care? What can LLVM do, or what do you think it will do that'll make us go and forget about GCC? Oh, there are a couple um, of stuff that need to be uh, say here. Because uh, first of all, uh, we need to have like uh, people to work on stuff, and. Um, actually, most part of the of the developers, the LLVM developers are not like uh, Linux hackers, so we don't have like much support. There we, are, we have a few people that work, that use Linux and are working with LVM like a full, as a full-time job. So um, I think we don't have like we are not in that state yet because we don't have much developers. But that's that's one of the things I'm trying to do here, which is like show the project so we can gather more developers. You know, um, another thing is that if if Apple uses the the ARM backend to compile iPhone stuff, why we couldn't use? Why we can't use it to compile Linux and stuff? You know, it generates good code, so we have like a good compiler. We know just compile stuff for Linux. So I, I just like I can't see a reason why we couldn't use it. You know, um, another thing is that Clang I like very much is that you don't need to generate like the cross compiler to to generate code. So um, I think that that makes developing easy for lots of people. Um, what else? Is there any, any other questions? Sir? Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of the reason is simply inertia, because there's this in, in, in embedded yep. Linux and there's this huge investment in tools. We heard about it this morning. So, you know, I, I think I think to to give people a reason to to want to move away from GCC will be will be very helpful to, to, to build that. Because otherwise it's like, okay, I could do all this pain and I'm just gonna get an equivalent of what I already have today. So even some vision about what could be possible in the future with LLVM that GCC will just never never do or, or something like I that, think some kind we, of motivation. Yeah, we, if we had like enough human support working on it, we would have like Clang uh, working great to like because we don't have like two chain support right now because we still need linker and library stuff. So Clang doesn't solve that problem. But uh, one of the reasons it doesn't solve that is because we have like, um, we see lots of emails on the Clang dev list um, about asking, people asking about that, but we simply don't have people working on it. And it's like, it's an easy task. We have like someone working full time, we, in one month we'd have like really good support, you know? So just like, um, it's like you're saying uh, to show. Uh, it's like it's an it's an modern technology, and I don't know. People get some time to, you know, to that get spread and to to eat that and you know to feel that for real. So it, it's actually one of the things I'm trying to do. It's like to show the project and just like we have this. It's really good. Please let's use it. Please let's uh, please put effort that with people working on that. You know. Thanks. But if you have like. More stuff that I didn't answer, just say, and I will keep talking. Oh, no, we'll keep someone okay. else to go. We can talk about it. Sorry, I feel like I have one. So, you say there's not a lot of effort going into you know, ensuring that, that, that uh, LLVM can build Linux, build Linux applications in the embedded space or anywhere. You've got a pretty good back end for ARM, which is good. Um, and it's about the same on performance, depending on some of the options as GCC, sometimes better, sometimes 
Yeah. Um, 